Hey team, it's Tom from FitCure. Welcome back to the studio. Today we're going to cover one of our recovery strategies, foam rolling. So if you want to foam roll along with me, let's get to it. Okay. So we're going to go front parts of the thighs first. You're going to pop your forearms down. You're going to sit the foam roller through the center of the quad. So you've got the ability to be able to roll backwards and forwards. And we're just going to search for tender spots on the front of that leg. So let's get to it. So forearms are down. You're going to roll through from your hip to your knee. And then you're just searching around that quad looking for tender bits. Find a tender bit. You can roll around on that area a little bit till it dissipates. And you're just kind of trying to search around the front of that thigh, trying to find where it feels stiff. And just to mention early on, guys, if I'm irritating, just mute me. And then you can follow along without having to listen to my dulcet tones. So running through sort of hip through to knee, searching around nice and tender, lovely. So we're just gonna change sides. So, four rounds down, foam roller through the center of the quads, legs out to the side. You're gonna roll through again, so hip through to knee. Again, just looking for those tender spots on the front of the thigh, nice and steady. You can squeeze your quad, you can relax. You're just trying to find the bits that feel a little bit uncomfortable on the fronts of those thighs. And there's no pretty way to do this. You just roll backwards and forwards, trying to soften up that tissue best you can as we go. So you can chill and watch Netflix while you're doing this as well. Great recovery strategy. Um, foam rolling is one of those which has got a bit of a slamming in recent times, but we definitely still do it as a recovery strategy here at FitCure. So next one through. So we're going to pop forearm down, like side plank position. Top leg is going to come over the top. We're going to get the foam roller between the knee and the hip, and then you're going to roll through down towards your knee, and then back up towards the hip. What we're doing is we roll this IT band, you're trying to avoid the bursa as you roll. So you roll through, so hip through to knee, and then just above the joint itself, just below rather the joint itself, there's a little tender spot, it's actually bursa. We wanna stay off that section as we roll, nice and steady, just trying to soften up that tissue as we roll backwards and forwards. So foam roll is really cool. So what the research shows, is that foam rolling for 15 seconds elicits a change in joint range of motion. Now what it actually does, we don't know. So as a result, it gets a bit of a bad rep online. So we're gonna go the opposite side now. But the reality is foam rolling, we've tried it in the studio, we've tried not foam rolling, we've tried foam rolling. And you know what, the clients who foam roll, we see less incidence of things like tendonitis, whether it's correlation or causation, I have no idea. But the reality is spending a few minutes, five minutes at the beginning of your workout, just searching around that tissue and trying to soften it up a little bit, whether it's just increasing the circulation, giving like an anesthetic type effect to the tissue. I don't know, but it definitely makes you feel better. So next one through, kneeling down, turn your foam roller 45 degrees, lay on your side, inside if you need to the roller, forearms down, and then you're gonna search through the inside of the leg, the adductor, working up that inside portion of the leg as you go. Again, we're just trying to soften up that tissue as we roll up and down. I've got some tender bits around my knee there, so I might spend some time softening that area up and then rolling up to the top and then back nice and steady. So we typically do this before we work out. Um, part of a recovery strategy, maybe at the end of a workout, if we're really sore the next day, might do a little bit of foam rolling there as well to try and improve that recovery, increase that recovery time so we can get back training. So again, other side, turn the foam roller out to the side, lie on your side, inside of the knee on the roller, forearms down, hips are square to the floor, and then off you go with that other side. So again, use it as a recovery strategy, soften up your tissue before training. Um, but it's not the number one recovery strategy, is something I should mention while we're foam rolling away. The best thing you can do for recovery is go to sleep, eat some protein, drink two liters of water every day. They are like your number one. But this one, a bit of an icing on the cake outside a session, especially when you're new to training, doing a little bit of foam rolling, make your legs feel so much better as you can get at it sooner. So next one, we're gonna sit on the foam roller, both bum cheeks on, put hand on the floor, same hand, same hip, ankle across the knee, and then you're gonna roll side bit of the bum muscle. Again, just searching around the bum muscle, trying to see if anything feels tender. Obviously, you're rocking it with me today. We're doing a follow along foam rolling sequence, but there's a bit of common sense with this foam rolling. If you're rolling away and it doesn't feel tender, then move on to something that does feel tender and spend a little bit more time on that area.
come and then we're changing sides. So I'll come around this way just so you guys can see. You guys don't need to move. All you do is put your hand down on the opposite side, ankles across the knee again, onto the side bit of that bum muscle, and just rolling around, searching, see what I've got that feels tender. So again, beginning of workouts, at the end of a workout potentially, and as general recovery strategy when you're watching a bit of Netflix, you can rock on the roller, soften up your tissue a little bit. Okay, perfect. So next one through, possibly my favorite one. So we're gonna put the foam roller midline of your back, give yourself a big hug with your chin tucked, lift your hips up, roll up towards the top of the back and then back through to the middle, might click and clunk. You might roll more onto one side, drop the hip down, roll more onto one side and more onto the other. And what you're doing as you do this is you're just trying to soften up the tissue. I keep saying the same thing. Soften up that tissue as you're rolling up and down on that back. So choosing the density of your foam roller is another thing to consider. So I've chosen this quite hard foam roller today with the skulls on it, mainly so that you guys can see it on video. So next one's calves. So hands are down. One leg's on, opposite leg on top. Lift your bum up slightly and then roll through those calf muscles. So I typically start with the lower section of the calf before you get to the ball bit, the gastroc. Soften that up a little bit, play around with the position of my foot, trying to find where the tissue feels tender and then slowly work up towards the back of the knee into that gastroc. Find the knotted section. That's super tender for me today. So I'm going to put one leg on, one leg off and then roll through. So what I was getting at with the foam roller before is you want a foam roller that's hard enough that you feel it, but soft enough so that you're not tensing against it. If you gripped my leg as hard as you could, what would happen is I'd tense against that foam roller. I'd tense against, sorry, you grabbing the leg. And the same with the foam roller. You want to be able to relax into it. So we're changing legs. You want to be able to relax into the pain, feel the pain, embrace the burn or the, the stress feeling without tensing again. We want to keep that tissue relaxed. So if this roller was like an absolute brick and was really, really painful, all I'm going to do is tense and it's not going to get into those muscle fibers and release it off. And again, just play around with your leg position, trying to see where it feels tender and then rolling up and down nice and steady. Brilliant. Okay, good. So last couple on these. So we're going to place the foam roller underneath your armpit. We're going to turn your palm up towards the sky and then you're going to roll that fleshy bit underneath your armpit, depending on how far your lat goes down. You're just going to try and soften up the tissue underneath the arm. And again, you want to stay nice and relaxed on this one as well. Don't be tensing up. Now keep your face relaxed as you roll through. And then playing around, trying to see where that tender tissue is and softening it up. So there's loads of research on these now, more and more coming out. Some of it showed that people's explosive power improved as well when they were foam rolling, and then they went on to do a sprint-based session. But again, what we say to all our clients here is try it, give it a few weeks, try it regularly, and then see if it works for you. Again, so I hit through to me, just soften up that tissue. So typically, I personally would foam roll just before sessions, and what I would do, I wouldn't do the sort of full foam rolling hand grenade, as we call it today, that I'm doing. I'd just find what feels a bit stiff, what feels a bit tender, and then I'd roll those sections up, then I'd get into my breathing work and my mobility, and then into my strength training, or whatever that workout entails. Just softening up. Um, but you do it as often as you feel is beneficial for you. <laughs> That's our activity completed, guys. That's foam rolling today. Thank you so much for following me. More videos to come. See you guys in Result City very soon.